Good morning. <clears throat> We're going to do something that we don't usually do. <clears throat> We're going to start two minutes early. Because it's 10.30-ish, and so we're going to we're gonna see what happens. It's never been done before. I'm going to take my glasses off and do a uh, call to worship. Call to worship is from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for another beautiful, hot day. We pray that you will bless our time here together, bless whatever worship we can offer to you uh, through song, through the message, through every aspect of this service. We just pray you'll bless that. We pray this in your name. Amen. If you're able to stand with us, please do. <clears throat> the sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing.
Come now, fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song, sung by.
visual aids I've given up on crafts so but I have a lot of really neat announcements today we will be having picnic in the backyard at the Malcolm's house the address is in the bulletin uh, buy a lunch bring a lunch and come on over I know they have a lot of shade I'm looking forward to that today um, do you have one slide for me about the uh, pregnancy care center this is from the city but the city of Lethbridge and area has raised $27,255. Those were the baby bottles that we gave. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we didn't give all of that, but I know we gave a fair amount, so thank you for your donations. Uh, bottled waters, Pastor Mark wanted, to tell, wanted me to tell you that he has hauled 320 bottles of water away from here to various agencies, and if you look, we're starting a new stack, so that is fantastic. Thank you for your generosity there. For board members, it's a church board meeting tomorrow night. Craft and sales are coming. Uh, people are bringing in crafts for the craft and uh, bake sale that is going to happen on uh, September 10th. We've started to put them in a room. I need to save money because there's several things in there that I want to buy. Uh, if you want to bring your crafts, bring them any time. I think Brenda thought that the committee would actually price them. And Brenda will also give us some information uh, on uh, how to bring things to the bake sale. You know, there are regulations and safety things as well. Uh, good, I don't need to announce that. I think we're going to the Malcolms because Alma is here, so she has remembered. Um, <laughs> mustard seed. We have another picture. This says 82%. Isn't that fantastic? We have some rather good news in the fact that several of us listened to global TV this morning, and France is short of mustard. And we have mustard seed growing out there, so perhaps we can raise it big enough to, to sell it and make some more money for the mustard seed. You're laughing. You don't think we can do that? You never know. Uh, those are all of my announcements, I think. Thanks very much, guys. I can 
sacrifice of love, Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. I'll invite Pastor Mark forward for prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, we, we thank you uh, for this morning. We thank you for this time where we can be uh, together uh, as brothers and sisters in the faith, uh, where we can come and encourage one another, support one another, and find hope and help uh, through the power of your presence. We, we bring our needs to you this morning, God. We thank you uh, that you care uh, even about the small things that we may worry or fear over. And we're grateful, God, how you respond in those, uh, in those areas. I thank you, God, this morning for, uh, for helping Aubrey uh, find a full-time job. Uh, we are so grateful for that, Lord. And uh, as he starts next week, I pray that you will uh, give him uh, encouragement and strength, uh, bless him as he, as he uh, endeavors uh, to begin, uh, at least in this sense, with a full-time job preparing uh, for the future of his family. And we pray for his wife and their children, still in Africa. We ask, God, that you will continue to care for them there. And uh, Lord, as we um, finalize things and send paperwork into the government, I, I pray, God, that you will open doors there, uh, that that file will get looked at by the right person, that it will not take years, but... Uh, months or weeks even, God, that you will be at work there. I pray, uh, Father, for those uh, unspoken needs this morning within our family. Um, you, God, care for us. You provide for us. You provide our financial needs, our spiritual needs, our emotional needs, uh, our physical needs, God. I uh, I continue to pray for the healing of our sister Patty and asking, Lord, that you will be her strength and uh, continue to give her hope and endurance, God, in the midst of uh, dealing with, with these things. I pray, too, um, Lord, that you will just continue to be at work in our midst. Um, Lord, that you will continue to guide us Direct us along the path you have for us. I pray, dear God, too, for the younger generations. Our heart, our heart cries out as your heart cries out, God, that the younger generations will follow you as well. Lord, we pray that you would continue to call young adults, youth, and children to yourself. I pray, dear Lord, that um, you would use us as part of your mission uh, to minister to those generations. We pray, dear God, that they would see you not only as a God of love, but you are also a God of justice. You are a God of, who cares for all, that all matter in your sight. And I, I pray, Lord, that you would continue to do that work. And I pray too, Lord... Um, that you would continue to call those younger generations to serve not only within the body of Christ, but to serve as shepherds, to serve as missionaries, to serve wherever you might take them, even in the marketplace, God. 
Leading a, a business as a godly man or a godly woman. So we ask humbly that of you. I pray too, um, Lord, for uh, the tent city. Lord, I, I don't fully know what's going on there. I know there are so many needs within that group of people. Not, not just the need of a, a, a permanent residence, but, but the need for, for mental health, uh, the need for employment, the, 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 the need for uh, maybe education. Um, God, there are so many more things that, that I don't even know that they need. And, and so, God, I pray that you'll be at work there. I, I pray, God, that you will bring hope to those, to, uh, to our homeless neighbors, that you bring help. Thank you, God, for the organizations around our city that are, that are positioned to help in, in different ways. And so I pray your blessing upon them. And being part of our neighborhood, God, I just pray that you will uh, show us how we can serve, whether it's, whether it's even simply serving in the soup kitchen or Streets Alive or even here, just to be able to hand out a bottle of water and a, a, and a smile and start a conversation. God, I just, I just pray that you will be at work uh, in their lives. Lord, I thank you for, for, uh, for those gathered this morning, both here in person and online. Lord, you know what they've gone through this week. You know what they've carried. You know what's brought them here. And so I pray for my brothers and sisters this morning. I ask, dear God, that you will be with them today. Uh, that as they worship in song and prayer and word, that God, you will meet them where they are. And Holy Spirit, you will continue to guide them to deeper Christ-likeness. Bless our time in the word this morning as we as we focus in uh, on something in the Gospel of John, Lord, thank you uh, for the lessons uh, that we find in the Word. Thank you for the teaching. Thank you for the inspiration, uh, your life-giving Word. Continue to be with us here in our corporate worship together. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, all. Thank you for all the donations of water, and I see there's more today. Somebody really wants me to work harder, I guess. I, I don't know, but, <laughs> but yeah, as Jackie said, we've donated 320 bottles of water already, and, and obviously counting, so, so thank you for that. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask that you turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 6. We're going to look at the uh, first 13 verses there together. So if you have your Bible, open up there. It's also going to be up on the screen for us. Um, or if you have your apps, if you got Bible Gateway app or something, or uh, you can look it up there as well. Uh, the Gospel of John, uh, reading starting at verse 1 of chapter 6. Some time after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee. Excuse me, that is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for those people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, It would take more than a half, half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. And another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up, here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? And Jesus said, 
have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the, the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all, when they had, all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. And so they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. Uh, The following are actual responses from comment cards from hikers given to the staff members at Bridger Wilderness Area in Wyoming uh, from 1996. Trails need to be wider so people can walk while holding hands. Um, That's a nice idea. Trails need to be reconstructed. Please avoid building trails that go uphill. Um, Too many bugs and leeches and spiders and spider webs. Please spray the wilderness to rid the areas of these pests. Please pave the trails so they can be snow plowed during the winter. Chairlifts need to be in some places so that we can get to wonderful views without having to hike to them. The coyotes made too much noise last night and kept me awake. Please eradicate these annoying animals. A small deer came into my camp and stole my jar of pickles. Is there any way I can get reimbursed? Please call. Um, Reflectors need to be placed on trees every 50 feet so people can hike at night with flashlights. Yeah, I'm not sure that's a good idea, but anyway. Um, Escalators would help on steep uphill sections. A McDonald's would be nice at the trailhead. Uh, (laughs) The places where trails do not exist are not well marked. Catch that? (laughs) Places where trails do not exist are not well marked. Hmm. Gosh. And there's too many rocks in the mountains. Um, We continue our summer excursion outdoors today by looking at a passage that has Jesus and his disciples trying to get away for a few moments from the crowds, and it just doesn't seem to be possible. Somewhere between uh, chapters 5 and 6, Jesus and the disciples had crossed, uh, had left Jerusalem and headed north uh, to the Galilean region. They get out of the boat, having crossed the lake, and a crowd of people is already there. They knew the miracles that Jesus had performed and were continuing to follow him. Now, I I don't know if this is accurate, but my impression of the wording is that Jesus and his disciples decided to hike up a mountainside uh, to, you know, maybe to get away from, from all the crowds following them. But when they find a spot to rest, the crowds had followed up the mountainside and find them. As an aside, I wonder if Jesus knew they would follow and wanted to see if they were willing to come this far to hear from him again. As John tells it, Jesus asks Philip a question. Uh, They had hiked up the mountain, and I'm assuming they probably had some food among themselves. They wouldn't have been uh, so foolish to travel without without something. I mean, who who takes a hike without, without packing at least some snacks, if not if not a lunch. But apparently, the crowd was just focused on finding him, uh, finding Jesus, and obviously there wasn't much to be found among them. Jesus asks Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? And Philip, uh, you know, basically, Philip, where are we going to get enough food to feed all these people? And Philip responds in the most human way possible. You know what? It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Jesus, we don't have enough money to buy enough bread to feed all these people. 
Now, notice what they don't do here. They don't try and take up a collection. Um, if there's hundreds of, or even thousands of people there, you know, I would imagine there's probably a few coins scattered throughout the group. Um, and if Jesus can multiply bread and fish, well, I'm pretty certain he can multiply coins. Um, I mean, that's what we tend to do as a church. What We would take up a collection to help and, and pray that, that we have enough. Um, but of course, in ancient Israel, there's no such thing as skip the dishes. Um, someone would have to go and, and get all the food and likely even hire a donkey and a wagon. Uh, and, and who knows how long that would take to go and get it and to bring all that food back. But Andrew, Andrew's a very sharp guy. He's very observant. He finds a boy that has five loaves of bread and two fish. Wow, you know, there's at least one person in this crowd that was smart enough to bring his lunch on this outing. But like Philip, Andrew asks a very human question. How will they go among so many? Jesus, we can't honestly feed that many people with this kid's lunch. It's just not going to, it's not going to cut it. Or can we? But then we see a miracle take place. Jesus blesses the bread and the fish, and then they begin to hand it out. And after everyone has eaten, the disciples gathered up 12 baskets of leftover bread. Um, we find out here there's over 5,000 men. Uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke kind of specifically say that it doesn't include women and children in attendance. Jesus used this small offering to feed thousands of people. Just, just amazing when you... We can't even wrap our head around that, humanly speaking. So I want to I just talk about this little boy for a moment. We know absolutely nothing about him. Uh, it's only in John's gospel that we know that this little boy contributed uh, the food. Some speculate that he was between 6 and 12 um, years old. And, and at that point, this little boy didn't know that Jesus was going to perform this amazing miracle and feed over 5,000 people. Likely, he just gave up his lunch to Jesus, thinking it was for Jesus himself. I mean, he got to meet Jesus. You know, he got to go up in front of him and, and give this to Jesus. How, how incredible would that be? But just think about it for a moment. This little boy gave Jesus everything he had. I mean, who does that? Who so, he so innocently and graciously gave all his food away? I mean, what does that say to us? But what are we hanging on to that, that Jesus can use? Have you ever heard of little Bobby Moffat? When he was four years old, he went to the altar and he gave his life to Christ in a small, struggling uh, church in Scotland. Several, several years later, little Bobby went to a missions meeting and the Lord began dealing with him. The ushers took up the offering. The Moffat family, of course, were very poor. When the offering basket was passed, Bobby... Uh, who was just crying, said, I have nothing to give, nothing. Bobby then asked the usher to put the offering plate on the floor of the church. The usher did, and, and Bobby, with bare feet, stepped into the offering plate and said, I have nothing to give God, nothing but myself. That was a turning point in Bobby's life. Bobby's poor family couldn't afford a fine education for him. 
So Bobby helped work in people's gardens. Uh, he started praying for hours. And Bobby ended up volunteering to help a, a missionary couple, John Williams and his wife. And in 1816, Bobby had turned 21. And he left home and he traveled uh, with what John Williams and his wife to Africa. Bobby found himself in Cape Town, South Africa, serving as a missionary. Three years later, in December 1819, little Bobby was now Robert Moffat, and he married a girl named Mary from his hometown. Robert and Mary Moffat served 50-plus years in missions. Bobby became Dr. Robert Moffat, and he preached the gospel throughout South Africa and taught them gardening skills. Many averted starvation because of what Bobby had taught them. Little Bobby had preached seven years before he led a local to Jesus. Little Bobby mastered the tribe's language and he translated the Bible for them. He had, it, he had the whole Bible printed in their language. Bobby's son John Moffat spent his life as an African missionary. His daughter Mary became the wife of one of probably one of the most famous missionaries uh, we've heard of, David Livingston. Little Bobby took one furlough in 52 years. God used one little boy from a struggling church in Scotland to bring the good news to a lost people in South Africa. Like Robert Moffat, ultimately, all we have to give is ourselves. Right now, we don't have very many children or, or youth. But we mustn't give up praying for the ones we have and the ones we know. We must pray for the next generation. That God will call them to raise up and lead His church into the future. That they will continue to proclaim God's good news to their generations and the ones below them. Now, we have a discipleship path in our church. Uh, live, give, teach, and reach. But there's no point in having a path if we have no one to walk with it, walk it with. Pray with me for children. Pray with me for youth and young adults. Ask God to draw them to Himself. Ask God to use us as mentors and teachers, to show them God's love and help them discover God's plan for themselves. This little boy giving his lunch to Jesus drives home the point that it, that it doesn't matter what age you are. You can do something for Jesus, even if you think it's small. So it doesn't matter if you're 6 or 60 or 90. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's another illustration that talks about being older here in a few moments, but um, let's talk about the boys' lunch for a moment. Now, I don't believe for a moment that Jesus needed the loaves and the fish to perform this miracle, but he included the boy and he included his disciples in this miracle. According to one commentary, the fact that John mentions the bread, that the bread is made from barley, signifies two things. First, that this boy is from a poor family. Uh, only wealthy folks could afford to use wheat flour for bread. And secondly, likely then, this bread would have been small loaves of pita bread, barely enough to feed a couple of people. You know what pita bread is, that flat stuff, round. So think of that, five pieces of that. But Jesus takes this humble gift and makes it into a feast. Which says that no matter what we think we have or that we don't have, when it's given over to God, He will make every use out of it. 
Now, some people have lots of money. Some have lots of time. Some have lots of talent. Most of us do not have those things in abundance. And, and we feel we have little to nothing uh, that we can give to the Lord. Now, this little boy only had a small lunch, and, and look what God did with it. Your little is a lot to God. The main thing, I think, is are you willing to give it to Jesus? You have something that you can use, uh, you have something that you can give to Jesus, no matter what you think. There is something in your life that you can give to Jesus. It might appear small to you, but God can bless it and make it useful to who knows how many. Will you give it to Him? Will you let Him have it? I think there's lots of people who want what Jesus offers them. But they don't want to give up anything to get it. Think of the example of this little boy. He gave it all to Jesus, not, not knowing if he would get any of it back. Pig and a chicken were having a conversation one morning in the barnyard. And they got to discussing what a wonderful farmer they lived with. He made sure they were fed well every day. They had wonderful places to live. He sure was a wonderful farmer, the chicken said. And then the chicken said, let's make breakfast for him and show him our thanks. Before the pig could answer, the chicken continued, I will lay my most perfect eggs for him and you can provide the ham and the bacon. What do you think? Well, the pig responded, what would be a donation for you would be a sacrifice for me. When we grasp how much Jesus loves us. What we give back to Him won't feel like a sacrifice. We should never let our giving be motivated by fear or, or the feeling that, that we need to earn His love because we don't have to. How much do you love Jesus? And do you know how much Jesus loves you? The sailing vessel SS Medina was launched in 1914 in the U.S. Two years after the sinking of the Titanic, a ship that only lasted days after setting out on its maiden voyage, the Medina made no claim to being unsinkable. For years, it carried onions between New York and Texas. During World War II, it was converted to a troop ship and carried sol soldiers across the ocean. It was bombed and torpedoed, but that ship refused to sink. On one crossing, it was the only vessel in its convoy to reach its destination. And after the war, it was sold as scrap, but it was rescued and converted into an Italian cruise liner called the Roma. Years later, it again was sold for scrap, but rescued again in 1977 uh, by the Christian ministry OM Ships International to become uh, the MV Dulos, meaning servant. For many years, it held the record as the oldest active passenger ship in the world. Since 1978, she had welcomed over 21 million visitors in 601 ports of call in 108 nations. Many lives have been changed by the giving away of books and the gospel, and countless have come to Christ through it. In 2009, she was finally decommissioned, more than 95 years after being built. God is in the business of taking little ordinary things and using them for His glory. Now, while it may be the great titanics that make the headlines, it's the faithful doulos, or servants, that are making the difference. The same is true of people. 
God often chooses the smallest and weakest to demonstrate His power and glory. It's in the small things done in the name of Jesus where the biggest impacts are made. Just as the ship was retiring at 63, it was put into ministry to give what little it could to serve the world. Now our congregation is small. And if my math is right, out of all, out of all Nazarene churches, we're part of the 38% of them that are under 50. And 50% of Nazarene churches are under 100. Now we might look at that and think, well, what can we do? We fall into the same mindset as the disciples and all we can see are the, the hungry people and the things we don't have. We don't see what Jesus can do with a few loaves and a couple of fish. But just like the little boy, we need to offer our small gift and let Jesus do something miraculous with it. Children, youth, and young adults have something to offer as well. And we need to pray for them to listen to God's call on their lives. What we do here may seem small in our eyes, but if we're willing to offer it up to Jesus, there is no telling how He will use it. Don't hold back from giving what you have to Jesus. Your little pack lunch could become a feast for countless others. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your word this morning. And we thank you for the testimony of this little boy. <laughs> um, this little boy who, who just wanted to go to see Jesus, wanted to go and maybe hear what he had to say, wanted to go and see the miracles taking place, who just brought this little lunch and was willing to give it to Jesus and saw the miracle take place before his eyes, how his little pieces of pita bread and sardines got transformed into a feast that fed thousands of people. Praise your name, God, for how you work. How you work then and how you work now. God, sometimes we get caught up in that same mindset as disciples. This is so small, it can't do anything, can it? Lord, transform our mindset. Transform our thoughts to thinking no matter what, the size of it, God will use it. No matter that little bottle of water I give to someone thirsty could do something beyond my imagining. God, help us. Help us not only change our minds, but change our hearts. And Lord, if there is something we've been holding back, Holy Spirit, would you speak to us today and show us that we just need to be able to simply offer it. Just simply give it to Jesus. And Lord, I know we won't necessarily know or see what it does, but I pray that you will use it to bring glory to your name to bring change and expansion to your kingdom. Continue to speak to us, Lord, here as we continue to worship together. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for how you speak and live and work in us and through us. God, bless your holy name today and take these small gifts and use them to multiply your kingdom. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
We have a couple more songs. <coughs> and just so you're aware, my lunch would not be mistaken for the little boy's lunch, because I have big lunch.
dismissed.